Tim Maudlin is a professor of philosophy at New York University. His books include The Metaphysics Within Physics and Philosophy of Physics, Space and Time. Tim, what is time and how do philosophers and physicists think about time? Well, I would say the question what is time is a, a bit funny because, of course, the easiest sorts of things where you can answer a question like that are things that are composite or made of other things and you can you know, what is a table? Well, it has four legs and a top and so on. You can break it down in some way. I think time is a fundamental feature of the physical world. Um, it's a kind of ordering of events, a, an asymmetric ordering. Um, what I've said is that time is what, in, in virtue of what events happen in a particular order from beginning to end. Um, I think it's more likely to analyze other things in terms, in part of, of time order than you are to time or something else. And I think we're all perfectly familiar with the passage of time. So not the kind of thing I think needs a, a lot of analysis. Uh, it's reasonably clear how to represent it mathematically and, uh, and physics, because it's involved, concerns things happening in space and time, obviously has to have some kind of representation of time. It's often said that um, time is what stops everything happening at once, which is it's a famous uh, saying in physics. But um, how, well, it, how... It, actually came, it, it was actually graffiti in a restroom, as far as I can tell. I looked into that, and uh, John Wheeler was the first one who said that, but he said he found it written in a restroom in Austin, Texas, in a cafe. <laughs> time is what keeps everything from happening all at once. And then he added, and, and space is what keeps everything keeps everything from all happening to me. <laughs> Very good, very good. That's a good one. Um, just to go back to that. Um, so, with, with that in mind, there's often thought that time is an illusion within physics, and sometimes this relates to um, space time relativity. How do you feel about time being an illusion? Is this possible, or is it just the way we're defining time? Because, as you say, everyone's got a, an innate understanding of what time is, because me and you have just experienced about three minutes now of talking in a passage right. of time. So, how, how can it be an illusion? So I, I think there are a, a few things that get run together here, some of which you can make sense out of and some of which you can't. If you asked Newton what time was, time, uh, Newton would have said, well, there are these moments or instants of time, and those are completely global. So they, you can ask what's happening at a certain moment anywhere in the universe. If I, if I snap my fingers, I can ask, well, what was going on on Alpha Centauri right then when I snapped my fingers? And that notion of there being some absolute simultaneity is simply rejected in relativity. So if we think that the theory of relativity is right about space-time structure, then you can say that particular idea of absolute simultaneity, I don't know if it's the right thing to say it's an illusion, it just doesn't exist physically. But I think that's not the essence of time. As I said, the essence of time is that it orders events, like the snapping of my fingers, um, and and that ordering of particular events is there in, in relativity just as well. So why it is people say that time as a whole is an illusion, I don't quite understand. I really wouldn't quite know what to make of it. Um, if I thought there isn't really a temporal structure to the world, and I'm just I'm just in error about that, it seems to me that I wouldn't even know how to begin to do physics because I have to begin thinking that I know something about the world in order to do physics and that I can observe certain features of it. And one of the features is time order of events and so on and how much time elapses between things. Uh, these, are, these are the sorts of things I take for granted. I'm not really sure it would make a lot of sense to say that physics could show us all of that was illusory. In terms of time being a fundamental ordering essence this still applies as you've just stated but i just want to clear this up this also applies to einstein's space-time relativity because essentially the issue is where space and time are relative to each other the the future could already be out there is this still possible under the ordering of time well the 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 theory of relativity is as has been often remarked a rather bad name for einstein's theory um You'll often hear that in relativity, sim simultaneity, say, becomes relative to an observer or something like that. Mm. The right thing to say is there just is no such thing in the theory. The theory has a certain space-time structure. It posits that space-time has a certain 
kind of geometrical structure. That's there independent of observers. It's not relative to anything. And I would say that space-time structure has a time structure in it. Um, the time structure is given only for certain events. There are some events that have no temporal relation between them. Neither happens before or after the other. Uh, but for the ones that are temporally ordered, they're ordered in a certain way. And for things like people and clocks and particles that travel along trajectories through space-time, those trajectories have a certain definite length, which you measure in seconds. So the basic geometry of space-time, according to relativity, is actually time structure. Um, the, the, the basic geometry of it is given in terms of the structure of time. Okay, so it's still feasible to say that we have an order in time structure, even though the future may be out there right now. Well, I, out there right now is a is an odd thing to say, um, mm. especially the right now part. Um, there is the, the philosophers sometimes say there's a, a philosophical sense of is or a timeless sense of is, which you could translate into is was or will be. Mm. And and if I use that, then I'll say, of course. There is a particular unique past. There is a particular unique future, um, which is just to say there's one past and there are facts about what it was. There will be one future. There are facts about what it will be. Um, does it exist now? Well, if you put the emphasis on now, I would be likely to say, well, the, 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 the future doesn't exist now just as the past doesn't exist now. But that's to do with the now part, not the exist part. Thanks for clearing that up, Tim. If we can just ch change track a little bit now, because on the macro level, you've just explained why time is an um, ordering structure. How does this become different, perhaps problematic, when we deal with quantum physics at a micro level, and how does time operate here? Well, the, the question about quantum physics, uh, things become problematic, anything becomes problematic when you bring in quantum physics, basically because it's problematic to know exactly what you mean by quantum physics or what the physics that's being given by quantum theory. There's a kind of quantum formalism and there's no general agreement about how to understand it in terms of a clear physical theory. I don't think the issue is microscopic macroscopic. If there's no microscopic reality, then it's very unclear how you're going to get a macroscopic reality because you think um, macroscopic reality just is uh, determined by the microscopic reality, right? You get the macroscopic facts by just generalizing or course training over the microscopic facts. Um, so in order to formulate quantum theory, you need a space-time structure. Nobody has an idea how to do it without a space-time structure. And if you want to formulate it clearly and precisely and exactly, that space-time structure should be defined at all scales, including the microscopic scale. And uh, to my knowledge, there's no reason to think there's going to be any more difficulty about time at microscopic scale than you would have it at, at macroscopic scale. Sometimes people somehow think, oh, quantum theory is just about the small and not about the large. But if you think for a second about that, it doesn't make any sense. How, how can you have implications about the large without having implications about the small because the large is just big collections of small things? You can't obviously have a macro large structure without the micro small structure. But um, from, from my understanding of uh, quantum physics, which is rather limited, isn't time essentially different there in terms of a particle being in two places at the same time. Also, quantum gravity seems to operate much differently at these very small micro levels and isn't generally this kind of mismatch between the large and the small in physics that people are trying to unify with a theory. And if that is the case, then surely that has implications for how we think of symmetry and time at the smallest levels. Okay, so you, you mentioned two things there that, that you want to separate because they're entirely different issues. Um, whether a particle or in what sense a particle can be in two places at the same time depends on having a very clear understanding of quantum theory at all. Um, and different accounts of it or really what are different theories that are ways of understanding the quantum formalism can give you different answers to that question. In some it'll be 
true in some sense that a, that a particle can have no definite particular location at a time. In other understandings of the theory, a uh, particle always does have a definite location. Um, that's just issues about quantum theory on its own. How do you understand it? Then there's a different question, which is how do you reconcile quantum theory with relativity and especially the general theory of relativity, which is our theory of gravity? Now, it's often said that quantum theory is about the small and, 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 and general relativity is about the large, but that also, I think, makes no sense. Um, each theory ought to be about things at all scales. There, there is gravity at small scales. It's, it's not very much and you don't have to take account of it often, but it's there. Uh, and of course, quantum theory better apply to stars and other very large objects. So it's not so much large and small. There is a question of how do you reconcile gravity with the other forces where gravity is treated, has been treated by general relativity and the other forces have been treated by quantum theory. And there are issues about bringing those two formalisms together. But because no one knows quite how to bring them together, it's, it, it's very premature to say there's any particular issue, uh, about say, space-time at small scales. Uh, the, if you had a well-defined theory, you might be able to say that, but we don't have one. So whether there's going to be any, any anything strange is going to happen to space-time structure at very small scales, I think, is not something we, we know yet, and I don't really think there are very good reasons to think there's going to be any deep problems there once we do have a theory. So essentially the issue is about how these forces operate on different scales, but you're saying that this does not necessarily have to affect space and time, even at the smallest level. Well, what I'm, what I'm saying is that it, it is leave scales out of it, right? There's an issue of how to bring gravity together with the other forces that we have physics of, the, the electromagnetic force, the strong and weak nuclear force. We, we believe these are the four fundamental forces, and we don't yet have a theory that deals with all of them together. But as I say, each force must operate at all scales. So it, it, to think that the issue is one of scales, I think, is to misunderstand what the problems are. There are problems reconciling quantum theory with relativity, but that doesn't have to do with scale. Some of it has to do with the so-called non-locality in quantum theory, the violations of Bell's inequality, and how to how to formulate a theory that gives you those predictions using uh, what kind of space-time structure you need to formulate such a theory. And since relativity is about space-time structure, that brings in relativity. But this really isn't a matter of scales. There are people who think um, that when you get to very small scales, so-called Planck scales in space and time, that the space-time structure will get very foamy or uh, discontinuous or discretized or chaotic. But as far as I know, there are no more than hand-waving arguments to, that, that lead you to that conclusion. In terms of time and infinity, what can be said about time at the Big Bang, time before the Big Bang, if it's even possible to have time before the Big Bang, and how does this time relate to infinity either in the past or going forward. So let's separate a few questions there. If one just looks at general relativity, so leave quantum theory out of it, mm -hmm. uh, that's a well-defined theory. It has well-defined equations. If we try to model the universe that we see around us with that theory, it looks like it implies that there was only a finite amount of time in the past and that uh, everything began, time itself and space-time had an edge or an end to it at a finite period in the past called the Big Bang. And, you know, the, the, the uh, cosmologists and observational astronomers keep refining how long ago the Big Bang was, and you get closer and closer to agreement on 13.8 billion years, whatever it was. That's using just general relativity, and in that theory, you can't avoid there being a singularity that is the theory. Well, it looks like the theory breaks down, or if you try to take the theory really seriously, you get to a point where you can't continue further into the past. Now, 
what we think, of course, is that general relativity isn't exactly right, that eventually we do have to take into account quantum theory.